What's up guys? So today we're gonna to be talking about the Canon R5. I've had the Canon R5 for a while now and I've shot with it quite a bit. So I guess I was just gonna share what my thoughts were about the Canon R5. Well, I really like it. I think my computer's blowing up. So first things first, I'm gonna talk about time lapses. Time lapses, um, with my previous camera, I had the D850 and that's what I used for time lapses a lot with the Rhino slider. It was just easy, I set it up and it auto did my time lapses for me as long as my settings were right. I got that Canon R5 for doing my time lapses and also video work on the side, just kind of like a run and gun camera when I go out and take pictures or hang out with buddies. I can still record video. The reason why I'm bringing it up is because that night I went to Diablo Lake with a group of friends to shoot the Milky Way. We were there for about six hours. So four of the hours-ish, I was shooting long exposures. I was doing 30 second exposures for some of the Milky Way shots or most of the Milky Way shots that I was doing. And then there was one picture that I did, a 30 minute shot just to get the star streaks. It was about 20, it was between 25 and 30 minutes, but that shutter was open and the camera was probably getting hot because I noticed a lot of hot pixels on the sensor or on the photo when I brought it in to edit it. I kind of had a denoise a lot of a lot of it, but I was really sending the camera through the ropes that night. And the reason why I bring that up is I was shooting for like four to six-ish hours with time lapses and long exposures, and I was still able to record in 4K high quality HQ mode right after that. I wish I had some of the video files, but that leads me to the next thing that I ran into was when I brought all the stuff home, I plugged the camera in and I went to the folder on the computer and I dragged and dropped everything into a folder and then formatted my cart. It was a bad idea because all of those files and some of the large files, especially the video files, were all corrupt because you're not supposed to plug the camera straight into the computer and then go to the folder, drag and drop it to your desktop like most computers you can, I think, with cameras or most cameras, I mean. You're supposed to go to Canon's EOS utility and then download all the images from each card. That's another thing I ran into is there's two card tabs at the top in the EOS utility. There's card one and card two. After I figured out I corrupted all of the data just by dragging it from the folder on the computer, I moved into the EOS utility. And the utility, I downloaded the images on the next time I went to go shoot and then realized after I formatted my card, which why, why am I formatting my card? I need to just make sure all the files are there before I format. It's like, it's the only time I've done it. It's, so stupid. But I realized that all the files on the computer, I only had half of them because the other half were on card number two and I happened to lose all of it by formatting. Yeah, it was pretty, uh, it was a learning experience, that's for sure. Use the utility if you're plugging into your computer because I don't have an, uh, a card reader for an XQD card, so that's why I was doing it. Use the US EOS utility and download each card from that into a folder and then you can delete the stuff off of your cards to get space. <laughs> and then that leads me into, since we're talking about how that was kind of a pain in the ass, oh, ease of use. So ease of use, I really enjoy the custom buttons, the C1, C2, and C3. I have C1 set up as HQ mode, 4K, 24 FPS. And then I have C2 set up as HQ mode, 60 FPS for 4K. And then I have C3 set up as 120 for a high frame rate. And that's just what I roll with. Just a quick run and gun. I can choose C1 and then I just adjust my ISO and my ND filter from there and I'm good to go. So I thought that was really nice because I use the GH5 for a lot of my stuff. For all of my weddings, I've used the GH5 and I've really enjoyed that camera. It's really awesome. They also have the custom buttons, but the cool thing about the GH5 is you have C1, C2, C3, and then C3-1, C3-2, C3-3. And you just get two cut two extra custom setups for C3. And that brings me into shooting 8K. Is shooting 8K worth it to me? I have shot an 8K for like detail shots, but the thing that I ran into besides overheating that I didn't have enough space on my cards. 8K is ridiculous ridiculous when it comes to filling up your cards. If you don't have a two terabyte XQD card, which is like, I don't know, probably a thousand bucks. But if you don't have like a two terabyte card and you're filming a lot of 8K, you're gonna run into not having enough space before you even overheat, depending on the situation, obviously. I don't use an external monitor. 
and I have a 128, which I felt was fine. But now I'm running into that's not fine. I should probably get a 500 or two terabyte or one terabyte. Just depends on the situation, I guess. Next wedding that I do, I'll probably get a two terabyte for this just to have it. And if I run into that situation, I'll be fine. Crazy how much you don't get, how much space it fills with 8K. For just 30 seconds, it's like 20 gigs. <laughs> not really, but. It's a lot. The next thing is when I was shooting the wedding, I was doing a lot of the HQ mode for 4K, so 60 FPS is what I was shooting in mainly. I also didn't run into overheating for that. I just ran into the space issue where I ran out of space on my XQD card in the studio when we were at the studio before we got to the gardens and I had to switch to IPB mode compared to all I. And what I'm talking about right now is the compression for the video files. So you have all I and you have IPB. All I, you have the highest quality per frame. Every single frame is a high quality than IPB mode. IPB mode is lower quality, so it's gonna be a little bit harder to do color correction, and it's gonna be a little bit harder to do slow motion with IPB as well. And the reason why I say that is during the wedding, I switched to IPB mode because I had to switch to an SD card. And with IPB mode, you can shoot 4K, 60 FPS, in line skip mode, basically. And when I went into post to slow down those 60 FPS clips, to the 40% that I you technically can, down to 24 FPS is 40%. You slow it down to 40% and I was getting a lot of jitters, like a lot of jittery footage. It was, it was like it was lagging, like a video game and you have shitty internet at home and it was just like, uh, uh. I don't know if it was to the, it was because of the color grade, the intensive color grade that I did, or I don't know if it was just, that's how IPB mode is. It's lower quality frames in that like bundle of frames each second, um, if that kind of makes sense. I ended up taking it from 40%, putting up to 60%, and then applying optical flow, which kind of compensates for missing frames, and it sort of helped. So maybe that'll help you. Also in the wedding, I ran into a situation where my gimbal busted. You shouldn't always have to rely on a battery operated machine. So I thankfully brought my Steadicam, which I bring every single time just because I know I can't rely on a battery operated gimbal sometimes or most of the time. So the gimbal motors failed on the DJI Ronin S that I had. When the the motors failed, I switched over to my Steady Rig, which is just mechanical. It's not, it's not, um, um, it's just a mechanical, it's a non-battery operated gimbal, basically. It's my go-to just in case if, if shit hits the fan. So I threw the cannon on the steady cam. From there, I noticed on certain movements, I was getting the wobble. I'm sure you guys have heard of the wobble. And when you're in wide, like 16 mil, you'll get wobble in the corners and stuff. And the way I compensated with that is I just, I, could, I just didn't shoot wide. And I kind of switched between focal lengths. So just be careful with the wobble. Ibis is super strong, What is what I've noticed with this camera. I don't know if there's really a way to turn it down. I might have to mess with it a little bit, but it wasn't really that bad. It's just I adapted to my situation. Like you get a lot of sway with a steady cam and stuff and always bring a steady cam. And if you don't have a gimbal or a steady cam, the first thing you should purchase is a steady cam. <laughs> a glide cam or whatever, just because, and then get good at it because you won't have anything fail on that unless screws are falling out or something. And then that brings me to the EF adapters. So I got an EF adapter for all my EF lenses and um, the EF adapter works great. I got the control ring and autofocus works great on the lenses and I haven't really noticed any issues. It's just an adapter. It's awesome. I would think it was like 130 bucks or something like that. One thing also with 8K mode is I noticed that if you kind of tweak your settings in camera on manual or whatever, or you're trying to set up a preset, sometimes, I don't know what setting it is specifically, but there's a setting that makes your 8K disappear and you can't see it or click on it or access it. I was digging through the menus for a while, just changing things around, messing stuff up. I mean, I'm gonna have to figure out what's causing it, obviously, and then if I do figure it out, I'll leave it in the comments below or in the description so you have a better idea of how to fix yours as well. But what I did was reset the settings. So I went to, I went in the camera settings and I reset all the settings. And the cool thing about that is it doesn't mess with your presets that you set up. So C1, C2, and C3, they don't get messed with. And then you can see that the 8K will pop up. 
I don't know what's causing it. It's not like it's the zebras or anything, but it was just a little weird to me. I was reading forums and trying to figure it out and no one really had a clear answer. So I was just like, reset and it worked. But yeah, that's it for me today, guys, on the Canon R5. If there's any questions or if you wanna know anything else or if you want me to talk about anything else, some situations that you ran into or some things that are awesome for the camera, just let me know in the comments below or message me on Instagram, whatever you wanna do. And yeah, I hope you took away some information from this video. I just wanted to talk about the Canon R5. All right, peace out, guys.